wild cheating moments on paternity court. I come in to Eric's room to come pick something up. All I saw, her head towards his closet and booty in the air. I was uh, intimate with another guy in July. <sighs> Ms. Diaz, that would make four different men you slept with. You know what's key in a relationship, right? Staying loyal. But things get wild when your man's behind bars. Miss Stembridge might have seen it as a chance to cash in cozy in with Mr. Eric, AKA her boyfriend's bestie. And we know what that calls for. I'm blaming her because she knew better. She knew better. He was single. I don't blame him for nothing. Single man do whatever he wants. Should right? let me get you out She's of jail. She's with somebody. She's with somebody. All right. So when you're with somebody, you're supposed to be voted to that. Exactly. You sure all are. Right? But you ain't thinking about how right? you're trying to sleep with talk, other women. She ain't talking to you right now. We're telling this I right now from this side. All right. I'm talking to you. All right. Check this out. All right. So we just witnessed a typical scenario. A girlfriend accused of cheating with her best friend. But how can we forget the paternity of the child in question? Well, let's flash back for a moment and see how Mr. Buchanan finds out about this. Uh, me and Eric got in some confrontation. Like, and Eric is your? Supposable best friend. Supposed best friend, so yeah. you get into a confrontation. Yeah, we was actually at a store. Uh, we took Eric up to the store. And while we was in the car, your girl, why oh, you locked ho, 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 ho. up? Wait, I know it's a direct quote, but we gotta watch our language in the court. I just feel like slamming my head into a truck after hearing that. Can this get any more lame than this? An argument over eating food leads to a revelation of a dirty secret. I'm sure Mr. Buchanan, you must have puked after hearing that. All right, and I'm, I'm gonna take that serious. You know, I'm a serious kind of guy, you know? I expect people to be up front with me. So basically, you know, I threw the chips at them or whatever I was eating, you know what I'm saying? I put my faith into this woman. You know, I've been taking care of her and stuff. And to go back before this now, when I got locked up under false pretenses. Anyways, if you think that this was enough and the only time this nasty adventure took place, well, you might be wrong. Here's Mr. Buchanan with another atomic revelation. But why is the defendant so quiet about all this? Seems like she's admitting everything. She kind of picked me up. We get home, or we, we on the way home, and I'm looking at them. They both nervous. All right, they both nervous, shaking, looking scared, like they about to get beat. We're so I get, so I get home, I get home, which we were staying with Eric. What do I see? Lemon drops. Let me drop laid out. Hey, bro, I, I, ain't about, I ain't talking to, I ain't talking about two no candy. If you don't understand this part, let me enlighten you. Miss Stembridge got cozy with the other man due to being a little tipsy. And just when Mr. Buchanan was released from the jail, he goes back home to find more liquor shots. Now, that's promising. Yeah, he couldn't get laid off a of beer, so he's gonna try to go to liquor, all right? And Check this out. Gonna... First day we got together, you know what we drank? Let me drop. Yeah. All right? Hey. You, you know what that. I got? You know what I got that night after I drank lemon drops with her? I don't want to know. So what do you think Eric got when they drank lemon this drops the first time? weird. And just when you thought every piece of the puzzle just fell right into the spot, a witness, Miss McNeil, steps into the ring. She's got a story to spill. Apparently, she walked into Eric's lair and spotted something fishy. Booty shorts and liquor bottles scattered about. It's like a soap opera on steroids. I come in to Eric's room to come pick something up. All I saw, her head towards his closet and booty in the air. No. A liquor bottle right here on the counter. I took a shot myself. <laughs> that was about, that's right. While you were at it. That's right. And what was While you I drinking, Heather? What was you drinking? Lemon drop. What? Now that's what you call a full moon. Now even my faith has been a little shaky on the baby after hearing that story. And here it is, folks, the big reveal. The moment we've all been waiting for, the DNA results. Drum roll, please. And boom, the result says... Mr. Buchanan, you are Thank you. That's a blessing. I enough love Thank you. Enough. He must have did something when I already got a knock, though. Thank you. They ran out of lemon. Are you already... Thank you. Thank you. It's obvious that you're happy. I'm glad she's mine. Miss Russell came to paternity court claiming that a man who recently died is the father of her three-year-old daughter. And guess what she claims she is entitled to social security. Oh boy, we've seen this road down the alley before. To defend the dead man's honor, we had this wife calling the shots. Your honor, at my husband's deathbed, I had asked him 
did he want to see his child. He said, that's not my child. So he kept telling me all the way until he took his last breath that she was not his child. And you feel like at that point, if he did feel it was a possibility it was his child, he would have told you? Yes, yeah, sure. Talk about a last minute bombshell with an emotional testimony. But imagine the situation where a man could have been alive. We might be facing an entirely different case here. But that is not just it. Let's hear what our darling baby mama has to say. Your Honor, first of all, I know who I was sleeping with. I'm not that type of person, never have been. Uh, my kids are 15 years apart. Prior to me being with Bert, I wasn't with nobody for at least two months. You contend that you were sleeping with no one else. Correct, Your Besides Honor. him. Yes, Your Honor. Whoa! Sounds like this case might be headed in the direction of some crazy infidelity confession that's about to surface. In another confession, when Miss Russell did confront Mr. Richardson about the marriage, he was like, nah, I'm separated and all yours. And he was waiting for a divorce. He wasn't going to get no divorce. He said, that might be true. I always loved at least. But that's not what he told me. And my daughter and all. And that's him. that. Father, that's all it was going to be. And the fact that he I lied about, about everything baby. but his name. He, went to sign, he said he was not going to sign no papers. He was not no. getting a divorce. She told my son it was not his child. She was then you turned around and right. said it was his child. Come on. This man did cheat his wife. And I think we have established the facts. No. Anyways, what I'm thinking is that poor Miss Richardson didn't even have the time to grieve about the loss of her husband. But we need some more facts before we jump to a conclusion. And then after that time, you ended the relationship. I left him June 28th. He went to work. I and brought that, my stuff out. At that and went to point, shelter. was he accepting the child? Was he saying? No. He told me he didn't want the baby. He tried to pay the neighbor to get me to take uh, some type of pill to get me to have an abortion. I just decided I wasn't going to do it. Anymore. Now, that's one part creating the whole confusion. If you do the pregnancy match, regardless of the testimony, Nothing adds up. But according to the deceased wife's Miss Richardson, her husband had never acted shady or sneaky in their 10 years of marriage. But a sudden claim of fathering a baby doesn't just come out of nowhere. He was with a dude that I grew up with. Probably about a week later, me and him ended up talking on the phone. From that point on, we was together almost every day. He told me he was staying with his brother. About a month after I met him, I found out that he was living with another female, a 21-year-old girl that was his girlfriend. And the bottom line is you met. You started, you started us yes. after you started talking. Correct. Hmm. Nothing just seems to make any sense. So maybe we should give Mr. Richardson niece a chance to enlighten us with her two cents so maybe we can reach a conclusion but my guess she might be blowing the same whistle she was never in the picture until the fact that she had the child so after she so had you're saying ms russell was not in the picture when he was speaking about no his he, relationships he never spoke about ms never russell. spoke about her until the fact that he said that there was a possible chance that her daughter alasia was his anyways maybe this testimony was the final blow before we reach the dna results now i have a mixed up feeling about the mr richardson is committing infidelity and Miss Russell is trying to manipulate the truth for the sweet social benefits. Only the concealed truth will tell us. Ms. Hill and Mr. Richardson Sr. are related to Alasia Richardson. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all we want. That's yeah. all we want. I don't lie about nothing. I'm too grown for that. Well, we going by what my husband said, and as yeah. a wife, that was my duty. Well, here's a case that's like a twisted mix of comedy and sympathy. Mr. Flowers casually scribbled his name on a birth certificate, and now he's thinking, hold up, I better unsign that thing before I end up the baby daddy payment plan. Every time I walk in the room, she smile, like daddy is here, like, ah, oh, my daddy is here, you know? She smile, like big smile, she, she really loved me. So it's like, I can't imagine Kelly not being mine. But you have doubt. Yeah, I have doubt. Everybody gonna have doubt if you're sleeping around. Oh, ain't that sweet? The plaintiff has really connected with the baby. And if it turns out the kid ain't his, he'll be heartbroken for sure. But first, let's dive into why he got those nagging doubts in the first place. Let's be honest, she sleep around. So in my head, it's like, do you want me to be there because you know I'm going to be there and you know I'm going to be the good father? Or are you just going to use me because you can't find these other dudes to be the father? So you think she's saying you're the father because you're the steady Eddie? True story. Now, let's talk about our man, Mr. Flowers. He's out here spilling the tea about the baby mama's 
colorful past. But hold on, she's all like, honey, there's no need for doubt. Her story? Well, let's just say it's got us raising an eyebrow. Uh, the doctor confirmed the time of conception was around the time that I had sex with uh, Mr. Flowers. We were the only two people together at that time, uh, which was the uh, first week of August, and there could not be no other possibility but Mr. Flowers. Okay, so she made science the basis of her testimony. We have seen multiple cases like this one not ending up in the desirable favor. But if everything was just so cleared out, why is there even a single doubt? Why are you convinced then that Mr. Flowers is your child's biological father if you admittedly were having sex with more than one person? I felt like Mr. Flowers wasn't giving me the support I needed emotionally or financially for us to be able to make a relationship work. I'm sure that he's the father because me and I was only with him during the time of conception. Okay, the defendant just admitting to be cheating on Mr. Flowers, what? And the reason she gave doesn't justify anything. And top of that, the conception calendar Ms. Diaz didn't give much help as she slept with both the men, Mr. Flowers and Mr. Bowman, during the same week. How does it get to the point where you decide to jump on board and end up naming the baby? Because I got, you know, emotional. I always wanted to, another child, two kids, and I wanted to be the father my father never been to me. To prove it to him, like, I am a better man than you. So now before we go to the results, our star of the show made his entrance. Explain about the details of his encounter with Miss Diaz. Oh boy, Mr. Bowman, I'm all rooting for you, sir. I hope you come out strong from this. During the time when the baby was conceived, when me and Miss Mia had sex, I didn't climax. Oh, well, I walked myself into that, didn't I, Joel? <laughs> this was one occasion that you all had sex no, man, without it protection. It was multiple occasions. I can tell you that the first few times when we had sex, right around the time when you know, the baby was presumably conceived, I didn't climax. The entire case has just been on a vague run. And Miss Diaz, that smirk on her face that I'm not sure what that's all about, and maybe the DNA test results can help us understand everything for a clear perspective. It has been determined by this court. You are not the father. Ms. Diaz, is there something else missing? In July, I was uh, living with another guy. And just like that, folks, we have another man up in the race for not claiming the baby for a woman who he believes to be sneaky and shady. Mr. Hundley had a lot to figure in this courtroom today before he finally made it even with the plaintiff, Miss Sand. What is it like in your home right now? Uh, we fight probably like three, four times every week. Constant uh, fighting. Constantly. So all because of this paternity secret? Yes. Hmm. The plaintiff seems to be in utter frustration as she claims to be tired of being tired. If I have to put all this in a situation, she also claims Mr. Hundley denies her child because he's not but an insecure man. But wait, our star girl had to make a confession. He had seen it on my phone. He took a picture of the message in my phone. And he had came downstairs and asked me about it. And I lied to him. I said, no, I was not talking to so-and-so. What made him mad was I said something in the, in the message about solo dolo. And That's not even the same person. What is it solo was the same dolo? Person. Single. Hmm. Now, I think that this might be enough to question the loyalty of your partner, right? Come on. If you are in a committed relationship, why will you even have to lie about your status? Even if you have some evil plans in mind, duh, that's obvious. We talked about that situation, like when it happened, we got in our grown man, grown woman, we talked about the situation out, but then we got new phones after this. She get a message from the same number. It was not the same number. It was number. the same number. It wasn't number. even the same person. She say it's not. It wasn't even the same person. It was the same person. number. I had no, the screenshots, I pulled up the screenshot, same thing, because I'm looking at the screenshot and then her phone, it's the same number. <laughs> All right. Now, that isn't an alarming situation. Anyone could have gotten ticked after this. Seems like that baby mama had been planning something in the secret and got caught while trying to pull a fast one on Mr. Hunley. Now, that's fishy. But wait, there's more. And then I seen a bruise like on her upper thigh. And that's wrong. No, it's not wrong. No. It's not wrong. Your she, Honor, we woke up the next that. morning. Hold on. Wait let me, let me finish this. I'm going to give you a chance to respond. She had a, uh, a mark on her upper thigh, like right there, and bruise. I left bruises on her before in situations like that, but I know for a fact it's I didn't leave this mark on her. Miss Sand, what have you got to say about this? I mean, the way the defendant came up with one argument after another 
you better take it out on something to protect your honor unless you find yourself being guilty. It was the following day I had woke up, I went to take my pants off to get in the shower and there was a bruise and it was way, it was actually way bigger than this. It, it was like my whole, my whole thigh, like on the inside was of my bruised. thigh. Was bruised. Definitely was So. No, it was not. All right, you can step back to the podium. I just don't know what to believe right now and what not, but soon after all these incidents, the plaintiff dropped the bombshell of being pregnant. Oh. Boy, just imagine the doubts in Mr. Hunley's mind are settling in and he hears about the pregnancy. Now that's a wreck. The reason I didn't believe it though is because because all the things that happened prior, so I honestly didn't believe I was the only one she was with, so I definitely couldn't have been the only father in that situation. So as soon as she told you, even though you all were in a relationship, your immediate thought was, I'm not the only one she's with, so I have doubt. Yes, ma'am. Now, just don't worry, sir. If you have doubts, we are all there to clear them up for you. And now we do have an idea about how the entire situation went down. So how about we now just focus on the DNA sprinkle for a reality check? It has been determined by this court. Mr. Hunley, you are the father. <laughs> you are the father. Yeah, this is the best feeling. I can't even explain it. You set out to break a cycle of paternity, doubt, 